Well, here we are. Welcome to Beers with Rich. I'm Rich, editor of Under the Radar Report. What a week. What exciting times. Well, at least at least we get to kick off the weekend with a beer. So I thought I'd kick off with a toast drinking 1.21 gigawatts by Deeds Brewing from Victoria. <laughs> look at this one. I mean, how good does this look? Like something out of the Matrix. So Deeds Brewing Victorian like us, proudly independent. Let's crack it. It's big. Well, it's energy. No, I was about to say take that energy drinks and label some energy drink, but I actually don't know any energy drinks. 1.21 gigawatts hazy pale. Yeah, it's not bad. It's quite smooth. Hmm, not bad at all. Yeah, Glen Iris, Australian. Anyway, there's a dog. Forget about that. This week, I want to. This week, I want to hit some macro news, and then drill down into stock specifics. To help you profit amid a lot of confusion. I mean, that's what we're all trying to do. Profit amid confusion. So the big news this week was obviously the inflation news coming out of the US, which was more benign than expected. Um, and that's sparked off a bout of buying in global equity markets. Always a good thing, like a positive sign, because as we've been saying, there is increasing evidence that inflation is peaking. But let's face it, interest rates are still going up. Um, you know, aggregate demands got to get pulled back to meet up to meet um, aggregate supply. Otherwise, you get inflation. And let's face it, inflation is still running at seven point five percent, eight point five percent. Um, you know, both here and, and in the US. So you know, there's still a rising interest rate environment. It's just that some of the edges taken off, and we might see a softer, as they say, landing. But what does this mean for you? What does this, that's all we care about? Well, outside of the beer. Keep them coming. What does this mean for you? Because you're the one that counts. Well, this means that you have to play both offense and defense. It's not bad actually, 1.21 gigawatts. Certainly good defensive, offensive play that one. But basically on the defensive side, you need stocks like Origin Energy. I mean, you know, our mining analyst describes this as a super-powered utility because basically it's a retailer of um, gas and electricity, so it has massive distribution power. Plus, it's a you know generates big LNG export dollars. So that's why we're seeing a you know, huge profit growth coming there. You know, and that's what you want. You want some of your portfolio to be weighted towards stocks whose earnings are protected from economic downturns or somewhat insulated from them. Stocks like Origin, like the supermarket retailers, like the, you know, some of the big banks, some of the big resources. Speaking of which, what about the, what about that BHP bid for Origin, uh, sorry, sorry about that, for Oz Minerals? I mean, my God, that was opportunistic. I mean, that was never going to fly. Anyway, I don't know what they were thinking about there. But it, it, it just, to me, it just says how hungry BHP is for those, what they call the future-facing commodities, like Oz Minerals is one of the big copper, um, I think copper producers got some nickel operations, but it's actually a huge copper producer, you know, and, and it's got a sideline in nickel. But it's, you know, it's interesting that BHP really just wants to double down on that future-facing kind of world where the you know the intensity is much higher of the use of those metals and things like EVs. So but what it also highlights to me is what we were talking about last week, which was drinking beer, but it also highlights, you know, the hunt for real assets. You know, the hunt for real assets increases during inflationary times because those financial types, they don't want to see them escape their, you know, they their reach. So really People are trying to bulk up on, on assets that provide them with security over the long term. Mm. You know, 
1.21 gigawatts of power of beer. So this week's blue chip shows you some of those assets that look particularly good value because that's what we focus on. Next, as they say in the NFL, we move to offense. Or is it the NBA? I never know. Here, clearly we're talking about stocks that have that kind of potential that ensures that your portfolio can keep a pace with the ever rising costs. And what do we say? What do we say here at Under the Radar? The best way to beat the rising cost of living is to make big profits. And where do you make those big profits? Small caps. Well, as I've also said, you know, the odd, the odd blue chip as well doesn't hurt. But how do we find those small caps, which is what I always get asked? Well, first up, a key is, you know, a good, a good team, a good team of people looking. So our analysts um, have broad experience, portfolio managers, um, they've run companies, they're mining experience, engineering experience, economics experience, quantitative experience, accounting experience, and even, dare I say it, financial journalism experience. But the point is we're all high, highly numerate, numerate and we're, we're all highly incentivized to finding stocks because that's, that's how we make our living, being successful stock pickers. So second, you know, so, you know that's the base, that's the, the labor component, if, if you will. Second, we have the processes. So we, we, put, we put all the stocks through a screening process, basically using various metrics, you know, balance sheet, P&L, cash flow criteria, you know, weeding out the weaker companies. So having a quantitative specialist on that side, side of things really helps. Then we classify the stocks that make the, you know, that make the finals. We classify them into value turnarounds, ones that might have hidden value via a, you know, underperforming asset, and yes, the ones that are high growth. Um, we do have a predilection for dis disruptors. Here, <laughs> let's have a toast to them. Who doesn't like a bit of disruption? Because that's what small caps are basically doing most often. They're taking market share off bigger companies who are often in ol oligopolies. So they're disrupting the status quo. I've always been you know, a big fan of disruption. So one sector we're focused on um, this week, like last week I talked about gas, so we focused on gas a lot because there's lots of disruption going on there. Another sector is fertilizer stocks. So the fertilizer industry is going through a bit of a boom period where, you know, there's lots of demand caused by obvious disruption, supply side disruption in the Ukraine, but also, you know, some the the hunt for the hunt for food is is only going to increase for obvious reasons. I mean, the whole of Africa is in a lot of pain. There's lots of places in pain, so arable land is a big, is a, you know, is sought after, and fertilizer, a fertilizer, the product is sought over sought after for growing those crops, and and it's no accident that those prices are are, are record highs. But what we like about the stocks in Australia is that they're specialised in a particular type of fertiliser, which is um, sulphate of potash, SOP. So that's different from the myriad of pot, pot, potash, which is basically broader for big crops like wheat, you know, and that's much more commoditized. This is more specialised because it doesn't include um, chlorine, uh, chloride, sorry, chloride in its, in its makeup. So it can be used in vegetables, it can be used in fruit. So it's much... It trades at a premium because you need myriad of um, potash to make it. So it's more expensive to make. And where we come in in Australia is that we've got all these brine lakes in Western Australia and we've got companies that have um, increasing technological edges in terms of um, commercial stage production. And one of those stocks managed to achieve commercial stage production, which was a big deal. So we list eight stocks in this week's report and it's well worth reading because what we're trying to do in small caps is look at the future and say how well are these stocks positioned and not necessarily buy them but certainly be in a position to buy them when the time is right and that's that's where we also help like we look at okay are their fundamentals matching up with the promise so that's you know it's it's interesting stuff and it's always worth keeping abreast of trends so what's coming up well What's, at this point, I always have a sip. Well, this time it's energy drink, 1.21 gigawatts from Deeds Brewing. 
And I must admit, this one's particularly good. We have the data dump to end all data dumps coming up in the next few weeks. 2,000 plus ASX companies reporting their at mostly annual results um, to 30 June. So if you can't, you know, if you if you want to see money making opportunities, the upcoming issues are essential reading. So thanks for thanks for being with me this week on Beers with Rich. Looking forward to reporting back to you next week.